Hey, what's up, everybody? You are tuned into Parables from the Projects podcast. I am your co-host, Mia, aka Nene from Pink Houses. And I am Gordy from Brownsville, aka Gorgeous Gordy, as you can see. You see the from profile. Brownsville. You know the vibe. Never ran, never will. That's what's up. That's what's up. Like we said, share this. Shout out to we have such 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 an awesome show for you today so we had to come to you live from bk all right so as we always like to start off the show with with like marvin gay said what's going on so pops what's going on i'm blowing up like you thought i'm blowing up like you thought i would y'all seen fox news today (laughs) right right got a little media hit fox news today (laughs) not that i watch fox news but but still, listen, he was on there. I'm with Fox now. She later for that night. So what's going on now is that I got crazy opportunity. All the stuff we talked, all the stuff we did. Now it's time to put the pedal to the metal where the boots meet the ground, where the whatever, whatever, yo, whatever. It's going to be a time. All the stuff you talk, some, it's going to be a time you have to prove, you know, who you really are, man. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a crazy experience because you you gonna have the power of your destiny, like where you go in your life, like all the doors are gonna be open, money, whatever it is gonna be, it's gonna be right there. Now you gonna have a bunch of stuff still right here and behind you. Yo, kid, parables from the projects is real. All the stuff we've told me this day, I got I got so many, I got these, I got three big opportunities coming up, and like I'm gonna rock them. I know I'm gonna kill them. And and a, and a, and a, and a good part about it is that I I don't know how you go wrong. Yeah, I don't know how you do. Like, I only think I can mess it up. I try. I, I'm there. You know, I try, but I don't think I can mess it up because it's all on me now. I mean, it's, it's everything that that God said. If you if you put one, if, if if you um, you know, He's always there. Not not that if you if you put a foot forward, I put one too. Not that. No, I'm not talking about nobody said. I mean, I'm not saying God said that. I'm saying God said He's gonna be there. Like wherever you go, like Jesus is above the heavens and the earth, all that. You know, you don't gotta. I don't believe in words. I, I mean, I don't believe people can touch me. I don't believe none of that stuff, man. I'm, I'm like, I'm one of them crazy Christians <laughs> that drink and I curse a little bit sometimes, and but I believe. I got faith and I love people. So, anyway, let me tell you. So, so um, I did a show. Man, it's it's a lot. So yeah, we're gonna have to come back. We we might have to do a whole podcast on what happened the last two days in my life because you know everybody know I'm doing comedy now. I got fired from the job, all all that stuff. I got, and that's a whole nother podcast. But and I've been working out a little bit here and there, and then I'm and I've been doing little odd jobs here and there. But you know my health care don't have that yet. A lot of stuff still got to be. But as all this stuff is going on, I'm gonna um. You know, I'm I'm getting all these these blessings. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting crazy blessed. Like, like, um. So it, it's an ex, it's an experience that that I don't, I don't even know how to explain, right? Well, well, to tell you the truth, we explain it. Now. That's what Parables of Projects is about. <laughs> so, Fox News. I was at a comedy show. Fox News is, um did a did a piece on comedy in Harlem. And I just happened to make the cut. Now it's all these hundreds of comedians in there, all these dudes that have been there 20 years in the game. I'm the newest comedian in the room, but I got I got a little little little, little cameo on on a Fox joint on the news anyway. Anyway, you that was happened. on TV. I was on TV. Was on TV. That happened. <laughs> that happened. But then, but but before that happened, I had got a phone call from another lady we do a podcast. We said, "Wait, that was." At- it's so much God <laughs> stuff. Happening. It's so many, so many. Every time, every time I'm, I'm, I get into a room, it's like somebody's there or something's there or some, some, something's there. And then, I, then I got another opportunity I'm gonna tell you about in the next podcast because I'm supposed to be flying to Los Angeles for comedy, but we ain't gonna talk about that yet. That's why you gotta tune in next time. You have to tune in next, next week because this one here, we ain't, we ain't. Next time, tune in. I gotta do my home. I got, I gotta do my push-ups for real now. Yeah. It's about yeah, to be on man. and popping, man. And to get a, to get a, it's like being in the NBA. For me to try to jump the line, or not jump the line, but for me to, it's hundreds of comedians in New York and LA and all over. Thousands, thousands, you don't even understand. Um, but anyway. 
we're going to talk about it. And I don't know if y'all even understood that. That was crazy. But it's just so much. Anyway, <laughs> that's what's going on with me. We, I'm excited. We, we're letting you tune in, you know, for sure, for sure. So, okay. So that's what's going on with you. Um, what's going on with me? It, it is a lot going on, but, you know, that's, it's just God is doing what God does, honestly, showing himself strong, showing up and showing out. So I want to share the scripture. The person that he's talking about that, that shared something with us yesterday was the scripture, Joshua 1, 3, right? Yeah, a lot of you know that my favorite scripture is Joshua 1, 9. That's why I go by Hall 19. And 19 is my favorite number. I got saved on January 9th, 1, 9. And Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous, right? So, but Joshua 1, 3 was the word that she got yesterday um, from... Um, from another person, I think it was Avery, but we will, you know, save that, but shout out to Shaquilla Stewart, but shout out to Joshua 1.3. I'll read it um, in the Amplified version. I have given you every place on which the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised to Moses. That scripture right there, just blessed, 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 blessed my heart because God is with us. He's showing us that every place where we put our foot and claim and say that, listen, I want to be here. You know how you put things on your vision board, but then you might go to that place just to envision yourself there and make a mental vision board. So that means that wherever you put in your foot, if you want to work at, I remember before I started at NBC BLK in 2016, in 2015, I walked around the NBC experience store and say, I would have a show in here one day. I said, I'm going to be working here one day. Four months later, I started working at NBC. So this scripture definitely like means that to me. I still do that. Places I went to LA before I moved there and said, this is where I'm going to be. Shout out to Edwina Finley, who was like, claim your territory. So this scripture coming back at this time just tells me, and I want to encourage you. This is what this podcast is about, encouragement. And we have somebody who is going to encourage you today too with her story. So be encouraged. Make sure that you remember Joshua 1.3. I have given you every place on which the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised to Moses, and keep on treading. Keep on, like Mark Batterson said, drawing a circle around where you want, like the people did. Whew, well, my just, people, listen, even if you walk in that jail, you walk in that positive attitude, he's going to be with you, don't think. Yeah, my people, listen, this is this is why we this is why the two of us is here. Is 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 two worlds. Right. And we're about to have a third person here. That's why you have this chair. So I want to um without further ado, our next segment is going to be an interview with my girl Amelia Thompson. She is an entrepreneur youth leader and so much more she's going to tell you um more about what she does so hey, hey amelia yeah. how are you i'm doing well good to see you Thank good you. to see you too good to see you too i want to make sure you you looking good in the camera okay Hi, <laughs> say hello to doing? the people say hello to the people all right amelia so you know we just want to ask um of course first of all who are you who is amelia thompson oh it's so funny um that I was just thinking about this question and also just your audience. I love what y'all are doing. I love that you're taking um, parables, like our own stories and using them to inspire uh, and to encourage. I think that's super dope. So thank you for inviting me to share my story. Um, so I'm actually up from Brooklyn, New York. I'm from bed born and raised. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually in foster care as a kid. My mom, um, who was Haitian, my biological mom was Haitian. Um, but when I was two months old, my understanding is that I've never met her. So this is all things that I've learned in time. Um, I learned that she was demonstrating some mental health challenges. And so I ended up being, getting placed into foster care. Okay. Um, and the woman who raised me, uh, she's passed away now, mm. but my adoptive mom, um, she was born during like the Great Depression mm. in the South. Um, she was born in like 1926, which is amazing. If she were still alive, wow. she would have been like almost a hundred years old, right? Wow. So she, had, she, had, she took me into her home, she was a foster mom in her elder years. Um, and so in that home, there were other children there, um, but she ended up keeping me. And so when I was eight years old, she adopted me. Um, and so I love, I love how you say from, from the hood to Harvard, um, and my story is similar in that it is from foster care to Harvard, right? Um, only God could have done that. So um, I'm, I'm a witness 
to what you're saying, Corey. Uh, that God is with you. He's with me. When I didn't know him, I, I didn't grow up in church. My mom and go. Right, me neither. Right, right. right. Um, but he was with me even in foster care, where I didn't know him, and watching out and looking out for me. Um, so every step of the way throughout my journey, I've now learned um, in college I became a Christian. But I learned now that he was with me from the very beginning. Mm, okay. Yeah, so you know, you know, it's funny you say that he was with you from the very, very beginning. And you and Ka- now you noticing that he was there. Like you can imagine, I did. I was on every drug. I was in wow. jail. I did. I did a group home for three years. I did so much stuff. Like where would I? How would I? But when I when I finally got out for the last time, I found out. I'm looking at back at my life. And I'm like, oh God, I had to do that. Oh, only reason why I do didn't kill me on this one. Wow. I got yeah. I was I was. I was, yeah, I was you know, in a lot of trouble, mm. and it's the only way I could have got out of some of the situations. I, I, I remember the situations like this yesterday, and it always looked like somebody just moved me. Wow. <laughs> like, and, and, and now, but but you won't know that until you meet God, and you, right. you'll be thinking that you some tough dude and run into that same situation, and it won't be it won't be as um, nice so as when we're coming out of it. Absolutely. Mm. So you say you found God in college, right? So can you tell us just about like that story? Sure. Um, so I always joke that I used to And also I either want to move this further or want you to what? raise your voice a little bit. Oh Ooh. sure. Yeah, just because I feel like it's might be oh, yeah, so, right. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah that's um, okay. I want people to be able to hear it. Yeah, I'll I'll try to project um for the viewers out there. So Actually, in my first time going to church, I used to joke that the only time I go to church, my mom was about to see the pie. Mm-hmm. Um, there was this church in Bedside. We loved their pie. So that, that literally was the only time. And we wouldn't go in the building. It was still also outside, usually over during summer. Um, it's like right by Restoration Plaza, if anybody yeah, knows. Yeah, yeah, Bedside. we definitely know Bedside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's this big church there. We just go by pie. But um, I had a friend in high school. She would invite me to visit church um, at different times. And I didn't go that often. And also, also, I would joke that I felt really like a heathen in church because I used to dress like a boy. Um, her church was super Pentecostal. They still are super Pentecostal. <laughs> so, like, most of the women and girls wore skirts um, and dresses. And I just, I never wore skirts and dresses in high school. Um, but one day when I was in college, um, and I went to a Vassar College in Poughkeepsie, New York, I was back home over, it was like winter break. Mm-hmm. And that same friend, from that church invited me to her um her church for there was like some sort of revival session or something you know um I cannot I don't remember what was ministered on but there was a visiting minister there that day and there was an altar call at the end of the service which you know I learned now is like typical right and so the minister said if anybody's here who wants to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior you're you're invited for it now for folks who who have experienced this I felt such an intense like, this is for me. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time to shine. But when I say I was like, absolutely not, I was not used to church culture. I remember seeing folks do stuff that didn't make sense to me, like run around the church. I'm like, y'all not having me run in here. So I was like, I didn't move, right? The minister was like, Yo, if anybody's here, I feel like there's somebody here. And I was just like, nope. You can. Did it feel like a long time when you were saying It felt like forever. Um, you you Forever, you right? Loved it. Like the spotlight is right you here, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so I didn't move. And they were wrapping up. So the only reason why we were waiting around is because her dad serves at the church. So he's like a bishop, or was at that time at least. Um, and that same visiting minister, he had he had moved from the pulpit. He went back and he was like, I'm so sorry. I know we're supposed to be wrapping up tonight, but there's one person here. We I'm going to leave. What? I'm going home. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. I don't even know this lady. It was the first interview. Yeah, I'm out. I'm going to leave. Yo, she I'm going to just go home. Wait, they not, they I'm going to tell you. I'm just going to heaven, God. Look at this. Look at my look at my arm. Um, my whole side is, is goosed up. You what? bugging. That's amazing. You bugging. That nigga, yo, I'm about to say that nigga. I did say it. <laughs> but look, <laughs> yo, that's how hype I get. I'm taking curses. That's amazing. Yo, I thought Pastor Bernard, he said it like I thought he, I was like, yo, dude, nobody else is here. That's how like, I I'm I'm I'm, I'm right out of jail. And he, wow. he kept doing, he kept saying, he said, there's one more y'all out yo, there. And I was like, I know I ain't about to get saved. I'm off the stage. He got off the stage just like this other no, guy. No, I'm talking about your pastor. Okay, your yeah, pastor yeah. got off the stage and yeah. came back. Mine, like, nah, just, mine just was up there, felt like he was up there. For, I'm like, yo, dude, I did the service. I'm happy. I, right. My friends was happy that I went to church because I just came home two days ago. Wow. Yo, and, and I, as you were talking, and I, and I knew it was going to come out to you. And I was like, I know this girl ain't about to say what I'm about to. I'm going to leave. Look at this. I'm going to tell y'all, man. 
it, it's it's something moving. Gag, yeah, gag. Yeah, I don't I don't know how we gonna finish this one with me it. shutting up about it. this. No, one. I love it. That's beautiful. We um, was together for just hours. Nobody knew that. No, we never said. We didn't. It. Never yeah, shared. I that. never knew how she got paid right. the price. Yeah, I've never known her for years. Price. Right. Uh, um. So yeah, he uh the minister went back there and said. There's one more person. One more I, person. There's one person. And so I'm feeling like, are you kidding me? So I'm feeling like, <laughs> you talking like, to me. Right. I'm like, oh my goodness. Right. Like, well, I got uh, Right. I'm not happy. Right. I'm feeling like everybody right on my neck. I'm like, <laughs> let me just go. Wait, what part of your neck? Right, right here. Wait, what, no, right, no, right, no, what you call it? I don't know. What you nobody that? else, no way. We're gonna talk about that later. Right, We're gonna right, talk right, about right, that. I told you, nobody, Mia and Hope. All right, he got two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sorry, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, so I went forward, and that that was the night that became Christian. It was it was my sophomore year in college. Um, and I, I wasn't even part of a church or anything like that because I went back to college and you know, um, did college. Day. I didn't really get a part of. I didn't become a part of a church until a few years later after I graduated and returned to New York City. Um, and was living at that time, I was living in Queens. But yeah, that's how I became Christian. That is bananas, girl. You gotta be kidding me. That's, I, I didn't know your story. So that's that's, that's cool. exactly. Yo, I'm telling you, man. I was standing there, and I just was happy that I did something coming home. I, and I w- I could have went to the mosque and wow. did it, but right. my friends, my my daughter, my other daughter's cousin, my other daughter's mother cousin, she and the pastor, Pastor Bernard, is tight. I mean, hun mm-hmm. hun Karen Bernard. Mm-hmm. You should live with her. Oh, they know, so they've been at this church, but I never, I never thought I'd be going to church because, like you said, I used to see people running around. I'd be like, I used to think it was, and I tell, I think I told this story to to the people in the church. Wow! Like, like, yo, know, I thought people just they gave them twenty dollars to fall out in front mm. of. Them. I never believed in none of that church stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I, then I got saved. Then I didn't even know what I did. And then I came out the church. It was a red Ferrari. Wow! <laughs> it was a red Ferrari outside the church. Now, now I'm like. I ain't paying no mind people all around them. Then she know my friend Mike Tyson and Uwe come out around from, from around the people and be like, yo, you a punk. <laughs> you going to work. church. Not, not yet, not yet, not yet. So I said, yo, so I said, yo, what's up? You know, because I just came home, but they went to my daughter's house mm-hmm. and to find out, you know, to find out, you know, Gordy Home, you know, Gordy Home is a, it, it's kind of big. It ain't big like for everybody else, but it's big in Brownsville. You know, when you when one of us go to jail, we come home. It's like, yo, go see him when he come home, give him a couple dollars. But anyway, but I'm not expecting none of this because I was changing my life. Not that I met God in mm-hmm. jail. I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, anyway, this, mm-hmm. this, this is a lot. This is real because I didn't, I didn't meet God in jail. Right. I didn't, I wasn't even looking for him in jail. You I said was he was look- there with you. You said he was still there with you. Wow, that's deep. That's awesome. That's deep. I don't want to take it. up the time because I, <laughs> I know my. <laughs> Do y'all hear that? So, I know. Yeah, that's that's very wild. Um, so I, I want to know. So I want to know when you came, and we're gonna, you know, of course, talk about other things. But so when, because all of us have the common thread of CCC. So right. I also want to know, like, so you said you came home, you know, and then um, from Vassar, you graduated from Vassar. Shout out to her because it's one of the top school country. I mean, oh, now wait, country, so. wait, yeah. Vassar. Then you, you Vassar is a college. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you went to so, undergrad. Undergrad. Yes. College, because you know I, I'm, I'm like Vassar, so two I'm GEDs, like, right? Two GEDs, double. But anyway, G. Then you go, then you go to the other program though. I mean, wait, wait, Vassar is like is like um Harvard. No, oh. it's like um undergrad. Hamilton. Hampton. Oh yeah, yeah, because she went. And to then she went to Harvard from from Vassar. Well, she waited some years. You worked right. You I worked. worked. Um, and actually, I, I was a teacher, so I went to St. John's from the, for so I have two months. So I went to St. John's first. And so she got John's. two masters. Let me know and emphasize that. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I went to St. John's, and then um, recently I went to Harvard, where I know Mia went too, which is yes, so, yeah. So no, we're definitely gonna get into that. I want to hear also how you started coming to CCC. Mm, okay because you said you went to college then right. you came home came back to new york city so how did you find ccc well to be honest i went to the first time i went to ccc i didn't actually realize it was a church i thought it was an event space for christians okay because how i got there is my, my mom so my mom passed away the summer before i graduated college mm. so i had to um and people who know that area of flatlands brooklyn i'm from bedside so i would i've never ventured over that far okay. uh and, and at least not not by public transportation because there wasn't there weren't trains um, that were easily accessible uh, there. So I genuinely didn't go to that area, but I had to go there to return our cable boxes. Mm. Um, and so if you know, like Flatlands, the Canarsie area, 
right across the street from CCC, there was an optimum storehouse, <laughs> right? That. Um, and so I just went out there for optimum. So I dropped off the boxes and I looked across the street and it's a big, beautiful building. And I see Christian cultural center. So I'm like, what is this? You know, and I'm, I'm not church really. So I'm like, I don't know what this is. Right. So I, I like go over and I think I'm trespassing. There's a, there's a, there's a um, wedding going on. Right. So I'm looking I'm like, oh, this is that, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this must be where Christians go to have events. This must be their event space. So I like look around, but I didn't want to get in trouble, right? So I thought I was trespassing, so I left. And then years later, um, yeah, well, that years later. Me, yeah, well, so that was like the year before I graduated college. Then let's say a, a year, some change passed, and I was back in New York. Um, what year was, is this? This is now, ooh, 2007? Seven. Yeah, okay. something, around, like, something like that. Um, I was visiting, I was staying in, in Queens with my God family. Uh, shout out to Cambria Heights. Um, <laughs> Yeah, big ups. Uh, <laughs> so I was CH. <laughs> I was uh, in Cambria Heights, and at the time I was listening, I was going to this church. A friend told me about uh, Times Square Church, right? So I'm there visiting, um, but I kept listening to the pastor who I found on the radio. So I kept listening to him mm. like almost daily, right? Um, the radio. Listen back. No, listen, that radio. Yo, that AM situation. Else. Yeah, um, that, right. Honestly. This is like five seventy, I think AM five seventy. So I listen to him every so because I listen to him so frequently, like every day. I was like. I should just go see who this man is, right? So I'm in Queens, Cambria Heights. I look up how to get there. I'm like, dang, this is like a real track. This is like out here. I was like, let me just let me just go visit, right? It wasn't until I got to the building, I looked up. I'm like, Christian Culture Center. And then I looked across the street, and I'm like, oh, this is a church. Right. This is optim- so the optimum, you know, across the street. This is the church. So then after um, I visited that one time, I was like, well, I'm going to take the trip. I'm going to come back because I, I listened to him literally every day at that time. Um, so that's how I kept going to CCC. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I love that, man. That's Woo. Wow. Yeah, I, um, and um, dang, you independent, you, you got your own stuff, you open these <laughs> companies, you uh, got your own place. That's crazy. You, you know what I'll be thinking about? Like, like we, we was here for like an hour doing, doing a video or whatever, and um, it just got personal. It just got real personal, man. That's it just got real personal. I, I'm kind of choked up, man. Like for her to say that right here, like, like he said, it's one more. Wow. Everybody must use that line. That's yeah. a good line. <laughs> well, honestly, and you mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say you do have to like if you feel if you doing an altar call like ministers. You know, please don't second guess yourself. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Go like, back right. for that one. For yeah. that one. Like, for that one. I, yeah. They're out there. That's right. Yo, everything good happened after that. I mean, it, you could wow. say, I mean, but mine was so, or mine was so like, I got saved. Mike Tyson put me in a Ferrari with my best friend, Uwe, and we drove around Brownsville. Mind wow. you, if, if, if anybody know when dudes get out of jail, how to, how to, how to, I was like, you just won a Super Bowl, <laughs> you know, but, but with me, when G- Gordy gets out of jail, comes, everybody comes walking down the block. This is 1990. So everybody comes walk. Gordy comes down Rockway Avenue in a red Ferrari. People are like, yo, Mike. And then they're like, oh, Gordy. I know, I know, I know. I'm not trying to big me up, but I'm just trying to tell you this. That's a big moment. This happened right after I got out of jail. Yeah. Right, Right after I got saved, wow. a new creature. And then I, I, when I came home, I came home as a homeless person, so I wouldn't have to go to Brownsville and hang out and start doing drugs and hustling wow. again. So I was in a halfway house, and I wasn't even looking for Mike and them. I didn't want no money from nobody. I wanted to make my way. And I had two major goals, my daughters. That's it. It was like I, the day, the next week, I think I brought the, my kids to meet each other. You know, I think it, it was like I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even ask for that. I didn't, I didn't even, you know, it, it's like I got saved, didn't know what it was. The girl told the the the, the, the girl, the girl who I went with, she was all excited because you can imagine if you get somebody saved, if you know, if if you're not in the Christianity, it's cool. And I don't think I'm not Christianity in the religion or whatever. If you're not in the Jesus and they're saved, and you know, if you don't believe, just just listen to the story because this is what. And if you do believe, then you understand. But but yeah, so I didn't, I didn't, um, when I get out, Mike and I'm like, oh yeah, you a sucker, man. You a punk. Come on, man. What you doing, man? You going to church? 
<laughs> you know, that's white man's this, white man's that. I'm like, nah, come on, man, like that. Then, a then Adrian comes out of nowhere, go, he just got saved. <laughs> And I was like, yo, chill out, chill out. You know, kind of like trying to be hard, trying to keep my cool. But but it, it was crazy because Mike said it don't work. He said, yo, that that don't that that, that don't work. Mm. And that day he took, we went through Brownsville, the whole Brown, not the whole, but you know, we went through the whole Brownsville, but you know, people saw me, they're like, oh, sweat, go to home. They took me shopping, gave me hundreds, bunch of money, and took me back to the took me back to the halfway house I was in. So I'm sitting in my little cell in the halfway house. I think I had a bunkie too. And um, just like, what do, what do you, only thing that stuck with me is he said it don't work and, and I got cash closed. And Mike, Mike, Mike Joe, you know what I'm saying? Working for you. Working for you, exactly. Mm -hmm. On the Amazing. first day. Amazing. 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 So, um, so what was, I mean, you were a sophomore, you know what I mean? Then you came back graduated I mean you went back to school graduated came back to New York and then did you go right into your um, program at St. John's and started teaching or you know what did you do after you came back to New York after you graduated from your undergrad um but first you know I began to teach years later I was sort of trying to sort of find my way um and and sort of figure out my path but one of the first things that I did was start working in the criminal justice field criminal um, justice mm -hmm. And um, I was responsible for helping uh, support and then at, over time, helping to oversee a program for young people who were involved in the justice system, actually. It was called the New York City Justice Corps. And so young folks who were coming back to Bedside and the South Bronx and Harlem um, from periods of incarceration, we were connecting them with job opportunities um, and the opportunity to serve in the community. So they would go out in their in groups and scope out projects. And then they would propose those projects to a board of advisors and that board would fund them, like they would give them like five thousand dollars, you know, to go and like um, create anti-violence murals, or to um, renovate um, a soup kitchen, or to weatherize NYCHA housing. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, that the goal of that program was to help um, those young people see themselves um, as assets, no longer liabilities, and the community as well to see them um, become transformed, and ultimately to connect them to educational and um, workforce opportunities. So that. Um, made me super um, committed to wanting to figure out how do we keep some people from getting involved in the justice system. So my, my brother, um, similarly, was involved in the justice system and been to group homes and um, got incarcerated. Um, and so I just knew that from my personal experience, but also my work experience, that education was a link. Um, that if we can get, we can keep more young people in school, less of them are likely to end up um, at Rikers or other places. Or, um, and so I, I became, that's what made me become really passionate about becoming a teacher. And so that's how I ended up going to St. John's um, and starting being a part of this program that trained me to become an educator. So that's where I went, that's how I ended up um, becoming an educator. And then um, the Harvard work came after. It still is connected to education, but this is more focused on international education um, policy. Mm, okay. And what made you, um, so in between you uh, graduated from St. John's, then you were teaching for, well, actually, when did you graduate from St. John's? St. John's, I think I was 2014, I want to say, if I'm, if my math is correct, I think it might have been 2014. Okay, okay. And then you taught until you decided, when did you decide to go to Harvard? Like, what made you say, you know what I mean? Like, what was that whole process? Like, oh, wow. So that, that, that's when I started to go into a different direction. Um, of and, policy. Of like policy, but it wasn't, it wasn't policy immediately. I was really, at that time, became really interested in um, period poverty. So here in the US, um, so I'll take a step back actually. Um, six summers ago, instead of hosting a birthday party, I invited friends to bring over menstrual hygiene products. Um, and we gave those, we created, created care packages and gave those to um, an organization called GEMS that helps girls here in New York City, transition out of sex trafficking. Yeah. Um, and then- I know Keith is on the board. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's yeah, right, yeah, that's yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're right. And so we, we gave those packages to gems, but then I was like, oh, wow, what happens with, so I, I sort of got um, awoken to this idea that a lot of girls, excuse me, whether they're in uh, coming out of sex trafficking or in group homes, um, even incarcerated, they don't have a menstrual hygiene uh, resources. They don't have mental health products. Can you, can you, can you kind of explain mental hygiene? What Sorry, you... yes, I should. So uh, in, in basic terms, they don't have pads, they don't have tampons. Um, and so every month when they're menstruating, they're challenged. They have to figure out how am I gonna how am I gonna afford these products? 
Um, and so if there are young women who are involved in sex trafficking, you can imagine what they resort to to get access to these products. Um, and this is a natural human function that they encounter every month, mm -hmm. and yet it puts them in a crisis situation. So um, I didn't, I wasn't even aware of that, of like how severe that is and how significant <coughs> it can be um, for girls and until this opportunity came up. So then I was like, wow, well, what, what happens when girls menstruate? I know what happens locally when girls menstruate. What happens when girls menstruate in a different country? And not only do they not have appropriate products at their schools, they don't have bathrooms. They don't have running water. Um, and wow. I learned, yeah, it, it's wow. so real crazy. Um, I learned that girls often, once they reach puberty, they start missing a lot of school and um, they can ultimately, many of them end up dropping out of school. Because you can imagine missing like a week at a time, when you come back, you feel this loss, you know? Um, so a lot of girls in different countries end up um, missing, missing school and dropping out of school. So I became really passionate about what does it mean to uh, create resources, um, provide resources, but also create systems that make it more likely for girls to remain in school. Um, and through that, I started like hosting what we call impact concerts. We got poets together here locally and musicians to, um, to share work um, that was related to girls and, and sort of wanting to lift up the dignity and value of girls. And through those uh, impact concerts, we would raise um, awareness about period poverty and raise funds to support organizations. Um, and so that's what inspired me to want to pursue um, international education policy. And like talking about God being with you from the whole time, one of my, one of the first, I think the first impact concert we hosted, I invited a friend who I knew did poetry. And then I learned that she worked at the UN. And so from that, like she, she was so inspired from the event. Um, she coordinated for me to host and, and moderate a panel at the UN besides the ambassadors from um, Nigeria and Senegal um, and Canada and Ireland to talk about keeping girls in school mm. um, around the world. Um, Canada too, the ambassador in Canada. So anyway, I just saw how God, and even to go even further back, God, God being so a part of this, this campaign is called We Deliver Period. In high school, God gave me the idea for We Deliver Period. Mm. At the time, I thought it was going to be like something totally different, but that name was with me from high school. Mm. But now, fast forward, it's related to helping girls stay in school. Um, around the world, but also raising awareness about period poverty locally as well. Now, period poverty is what? Period poverty is the common. Oh, period poverty. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I got it. Like, you mean like not being able to afford uh, feminine hygiene products? It's partly that. So it is an absence of resources. It's a lack of resources, but it also um, includes the social taboo. The way that we're able to talk about period peer poverty or menstruating, that's, it's a taboo thing in a lot of circles, and even a lot of countries, women and girls can't even acknowledge, they don't, talk about, they don't talk about it. So it's both a lack of resources, but it's also the social stigma, taboos, and then systems and lack of in infrastructure that make it possible for anyone who menstruates, for women and girls to menstruate with a sense of dignity and well-being. Um, and so when those things are absent, you're experiencing period poverty. Mm. Love it, love it. And you just, and, and so, you know, you have all of this, you know what I mean? You're doing these things. And then when did you, when did you go to, when did you go to Harvard? Was it 2020? 20, yep. Actually during the pandemic. During the pandemic, you applied in 2019? 2020, during the pandemic. Oh, you applied during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was actually um, a sort of amazing, another God story. Um, a friend of mine, like one morning she had this, during her devotional time, she felt that she had like a, a word for me, a word of encouragement for me. And, and she wrote down something like, I won't remember verbatim, but she wrote down, um, like, tell Amelia to reapply to the school in Boston. Um, don't be intimidated. Um, I hold the seasons, um, classes are online, something like that. Because that when I was teaching, I was interested in a different, I was interested in going to Harvard. Because at that time, I was praying about like graduate school, even though I, I was um, at St. John's, I, I kept praying about graduate school and I, and I felt God was highlighting Harvard. Um, and so I applied at that time, but it was a program, a specific program I had an interest in. Um, and it's for folks who have had more um, like seniority yeah. in the education space. Um, and it was, a, it was a doctoral program. But at that time, I think I might've taught for a year, like not even a significant amount of time at all, to be honest. I wasn't, I wasn't senior enough and hadn't done enough in the education arena for that program. But when I say I was so sure God was saying Harvard, I applied anyway. Um, and I was like, I think, and even I, I even, I even met with someone at, in, the, in the admissions office and I was like, I have an interest in this program. I'm like, that's fine. They said to me, you know, it, you need to have, you need to spend more time, um, in the education space 
to be considered for this program. But I was so sure that I heard something from God, I'm like, I'm doing it. So this is an encouragement. Like if you hear something from God, mm -hmm. you might have the timing off. Um, Cause I certainly did. So my timing was off, but a couple of years later, my friend had this impression like, um, like, you know, she was saying something about Boston and school and I kind of brushed it off. I didn't really, I'm like, nah, I think she's talking about something else. At the time I think I think I'm, I think I'm going to, sorry, I thought it was a seminary. I was like, oh, she must be talking about the seminary that I have an interest in outside of Boston. Um, and then I, I left that call with my friend, really didn't hold on to what she was saying, got onto a work call, um, just during the pandemic, Zoom, you know, Zoom land, and someone on the work call was talking about Harvard. They, they mentioned the Harvard Coliseum. I'm like, hmm, that's weird, because um, that hadn't come up before. Then, uh, like, not long after, I was on a C3 call um, for our church, and somebody on that call had on, excuse me, a Harvard t-shirt. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And that person, in the, she's actually a teacher, and so at her elementary school, uh, different um, grades uh, adopt the school. And so her school was Harvard. So I was like, that's interesting. And then I got a book in that same sequence of time, <laughs> like someone sent me a book and the author had gone to Harvard. Mm. Then I get these devotionals. Like it just kept happening. I get these devotionals that are sent to me every day. Oh, like maybe not, maybe the next week, one of the devotionals specifically named Harvard. So when uh, I said it was like, uh, I don't know right right, 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 right. this is, right? Uh, but he was right here again with Harvard. So I'm like, uh, maybe I should reapply. Right. Um, and that's how I ended up getting in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's how you apply. That's how I apply. Because I know that whole application process is a lot. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to apply. And yeah. then, you know, you part of that percentage that, you know what I'm saying? True. Gets in. And then not to only get in, but to, you know, make it to the other side. So mm. congratulations. Oh, I thank God. That was, that was. Golly, that's crazy. Timing, you know, it was Amen. his timing. Yeah. Amen. You want to explain what this part of the neck is? I mean, so. I'm curious. This part <laughs> of the neck is called the neck. Now, Mia and her friend has another name for it. And Facebook, just before I say this, please type in the comments what you think it is. I'm going I'm to give you a second. Yeah. No, what, what you, you know, ain't gonna it know what it is. And I know, I think that Amelia has heard this word before, but she's, she's just, just not saying she, it. The only, only reason so now, why she's thinking that is because she lost again. That's so two, now my dad two, and I right. have a contest going on because I said, don't nobody know what that is. Shanae, we're talking about tattoos. And I was thinking about getting a tattoo right here. And then I said on the nape of my, oh no, did I say on the nape? And then whatever, but Shanae knew what it was. So I had one point and my father said, he, nobody else calls it the nape. But I now was you so know funny. I was, nape was in my mind, but I was like, I must be, I don't think I'm correct. I was, I was going to say nape, but I was like, no, that's not it. See, she knows it. So that's kind of like a half a point. Yes. But anyway, now we have a running contest to see, you know, people know <laughs> Nate. <laughs> don't know nobody know no Nate. Like know we know what an ape is, is, but we don't know what a Nate. We know what grapes you are. Call it, you call it your but nape. we don't know. I, what could, a I don't want a tattoo right here. We I know what on tape that is. Nape of my neck. <laughs> no, I didn't you know, get what I'm saying? It was in my mind. It was in your mind. You just gotta, you just gotta free your mind. Nobody says that. Nobody. There's nobody on any other planet does that but me. At any rate, okay, but I want to talk about, I know that, you know, we, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, we're going to take 20 minutes, ah, scratch that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that's like that pasta, no, we ain't going home until we get all, <laughs> no, but anyway, I, I want to talk about, um, okay, so, you know, we got, um, you know, your Jesus, you know, I mean, international work with, you know, women and formerly incarcerated youth. I don't even know if that's correct to say. Do people say formerly incarcerated? Yeah, youth, who don't, youth who are involved in the justice system. Youth who are involved in the justice system, <clears throat> right, because I want to, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. name it correctly because, you know, like you said, talking about your brother, like my cousin, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's, it's present, it's mm -hmm. here, you know, and um, so, yeah, but youth who are formerly involved in the justice system, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You look at that, right? We sit right next to them. You know, watch your pocket. You right. know what I'm saying? Because your mic is got. No, I'm kidding. But, um, but yeah, so, um, but, you know, all of these things. And you started a few organizations, but can you just talk about, you know, um, you know, the main, you know, what you're doing now to continue um, the work that you're doing, like, you know, period, sure. I guess. So. Absolutely. All the work that you're doing. Happy to. Um, so, that work that I mentioned, the Weekly Period, is a part of a larger, larger organization. Um, and I, when I when I prayed and asked God, like, make it clear, like, what what my purpose is. Um, well, not necessarily what my purpose is. I, that's that's separate. But the work He has called me to do, um, He always brings me back to this idea um, of do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. Um, and so the organization that I'm responsible for um, is called Renew Today, and our goals are to um, develop training and programming. 
that help individuals and organizations do just that, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. So our, our mercy work focuses, focuses on gender equity um, and period poverty work. Um, our justice work focuses on, um, one, one bit of the work focuses on working with communities and people in law enforcement to bridge social divides. Um, and some of our other work focuses on healing, um, healing racial tension and injustice and giving like really practical ways to help people respond to racial injustice. Um, and our community work focuses on entrepreneurs. Um, and so it sounds like a lot of different things, but the umbrella um, and the main the goal is really do justice, love mercy, walk humbly. Do justice, love, love mercy, mercy, walk, walk humbly. humbly. I love it. That's scripture. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Now that's renewed today. And then you have. Oh, now, so I do um, have a consulting practice it's called 25 Consulting. Um, and so I've had the opportunity to work with different organizations um, and individuals, but I focus on strategy work and project management um, in, in my um, in writing. Um, report writing and other kind of writing um, under my consulting practice. Okay, and you consult people in education or it's, it's it runs the gamut? Yeah, it runs the gamut. So like entrepreneurs, educators, companies. Um, yeah, it runs the gamut. Okay, and then you have two five productions. I do two five. So that's more like my, so that's like a you know passion project, hobby, but we do have two five productions and under two five productions, we have Levity, um, which is the skit series. <clears throat> and we just, we just collaborated on something which I'm super grateful for look out for it look out yeah, for it. it's coming, coming soon coming, coming, coming. <laughs> um but levity the, the the goal of levity um and i think it's needed now during the pandemic more than ever is to offer people opportunities um to experience joy it really is to i heard i heard you say that one of the things that you love or you, you're you're happiest um when you are making other people laugh um and that's one of the things that brings joy to my heart as well because you know it's a delight for me to share the light um and so the, the goal of of levity is to encourage people to do laughter and to do comedy and to remind people that humor um, can be holy. I love that humor can be holy. Amen. Crazy. Amen. Crazy. Well, I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Dad, I don't want to end before you if you have any more questions. Man, but, we know, said it all. Taken. She said it all in the first, and we could have ended this podcast yes. in the beginning of this podcast, and I could have told the rest of the story. Because <laughs> there's no way. <clears throat> You bugging. You wildin', son. Wildin son. <laughs> you wildin', son. Yes. I mean, believe in what you want to believe. Do what you want to do. But I mean, you got to know. You got to. You, you got to say to yourself, like. Like. Something. Nothing. So, I think I read something like, like you, you got to know you're attached to something. Like, you got to know that you're not by yourself. You got to know that. That you walk around, you are attached to. I don't want. I don't. I don't like giving the devil credit for stuff. But you are. You attached to something, if you're not attached to God. If you believe that you you are in control of everything, and you, all right, we know that I don't mess with atheists because those are my best friends, some of them. <laughs> but um, but yeah, but you gotta you gotta know like, you don't have to worry about them if if the people who don't believe in God or Jesus or don't believe in these miracle, miraculous stories. I don't even believe it's a miraculous story. Somebody could have went through, somebody could have went through the same thing and without the story that we have. But that's not, that's not what, that's not what um you you can be, you can be like the Monday, the Monday, the Monday quarterback, what I said, the Monday morning quarterback or something. Like after all this has happened, you can say, okay, I did it on my own. But while you was going through it, you know darn well ain't nobody got you through it but God. You you can after you get money you can get up to this high level, but but that song Jesus walks was the biggest song was a big song, and who knows if he wouldn't have made that song. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that about but I'm just saying, <clears throat> you can you can try to you you can you can act crazy after something happens like like you can be a Monday morning quarterback and just forget like I'd be like oh I did this on my own I just you know, but um we'll see where that gets you. Makes sense. We'll see where that gets you. I'm sorry. No, good, good. There's something, you know, when you were sharing earlier, Cordy, when you talked about like people saying, oh, that's a white man's religion. I struggle with that too. That's part of the reason why I think I, I didn't really accept Christianity when I was younger. Right. Um, and even in college, I was studying Africana studies and I was like, really? Like, can, you know, so I was wrestling, like, how can I accept like this God 
um, when Christianity has been used to do such harm to my people. And so I was, and I really, I literally ask, and I really, I, I learned now that we can ask God those questions. We can take those big questions, those hard questions to God and be like, if you really do it, so with, yeah, yeah. Right? And I do it from a whole, I do it from a raw, a raw, a raw place. I'd be like, yo, is this dude lying? Yo, he'd be like, yeah, he's lying. Don't, don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I get the word straight from, so, yeah, it's a lot. No, it, that's a whole nother is. world. That's a whole yeah. nother world talking about, um, you know, white men in the Bible, because there is no white people in the Bible, but I, I don't, that's a whole nother yeah. subject. Right. It, it's weird that people come to you and say, my, my, somebody told me these educators got, got um, doctor degrees, all that stuff, said, yo, you've been brainwashed. And it was ironic to me to say that I was brainwashed because I was against the system the whole time. And if if I had to get brainwashed in a year, like when 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 you actually been through every school, you did everything right, you don't think you was brainwashed. But anyway, that's a deep story because yeah, because for because right. for, for even that dude, Doctor Kumar, whatever his name is, he talks about the church bad. But I, I I listen to him because he has a lot of other things to say. If he don't if he if you can't understand that it's a necessary place, then um, wow, wow I, I don't even know, I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know. How to, it's millions of, it's millions of Muslims, millions of Christians, millions of you know all these religions. So, so we'll, we'll um, time will tell. Time will tell. But also, God responded to me. He, right. he, when I asked him, when I brought him that question, like, are you since like, can I believe in you right. if you're if this has been used to do such harm? And I really hope God responded to me and because we, we serve a God and we, we, we honor God who actually responds to us, right? That's the beautiful thing about this relationship. He talks back. And so, um, and I don't mean like, you know, like the way I'm talking to me, mm -hmm. Lordy, but I, I, I had an impression in my, in my understanding that God said to me, either your people, black folk, African folk, folk of African descent are the most bamboozled, um, hoodwinked folk on, on the, on the, on the, face of the earth, right, to believe in me, or my grace is greater than the harm that any man can do. Right. And right. So that's what settled me, right? Because if I'm if I'm if I've been blinded by God's grace, um to by and and, and this is not to delegitimize um or to be insensitive to harm that's been done by the church because it's, right. it's real and that's and it's still being done by the church. church. But if you, if you if you I get it. Yeah, no that's true. Yeah no, um, but God but God said to me you can, you can allow that to keep you from seeing my goodness, right? Because that's that's what that's what man has done. That's yeah. what humanity has done with Christianity. He said, but if you would if you would try me, right? If you say try Jesus, no, actually try him, try him, and you'll see that my grace is greater than the inhumanity of humanity. Oh, humanity. And that's yeah. where that's what settled me. That's what I live my by. Grace is greater than the inhumanity. Yeah, you gotta write some of this down. Well, we got a tape of it. Right. Yeah. That's definitely a that, tweet. That's, that's deep, quotable. Um, you know. Man. Well, this podcast it. can literally go on forever because yeah, I know it's a we really thing can. <laughs> but we really appreciate everybody um, who came on. Um, God, one really, thing this that... was a big one for me, man. This was this was definitely a big you were, and, that, and that now I'm gonna talk about another thing that's happened in my life. <laughs> I know it doesn't stop. <laughs> um, but you know, one thing that we like to do with um, guests that come on mm -hmm. is um, honor somebody for them to honor somebody, oh. um, and we give them the parables from the projects person of the day. So you know, it could be somebody in your life who inspired you, who you just want to shout out, who you know just makes you feel good, and you want to give them the parables from the projects person of the day. So, um, but that has made an impact on your life, of course. So, who would you like to give um, the parables from the projects person of the day to today? Well, you know what. Um, I don't know if this is done and this is like typical, but I'm going to turn that to you, Mia. I'm going to shout out Mia. I've known Mia for years. We served together. Um, and I remember you making a bold move years ago <laughs> when you were serving in ministry in C3. One of the, one of the things that uh, Minister Dario did, who, who oversees and runs East Ministry for CCC, um, is he wants to make sure you were honored in your send off. And he got together because he knows we love hip hop, you're an amazing rapper. Um, and so one of the things that we did, <laughs> he had us all like write verses, write some bars. And so I still remember what um, my, 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 my part of that for, for Mia. So I'm, I'm just going to share that in honor of, of Mia. Because you inspired us. Right? Even then, I know you inspired the youth and the adults who were there. I don't know if you, I think you were there, there for that her last time. Right? That whole, exactly. You, you were there. My, my That's right. Um, and, but just for the adults and the youth to see someone go after their dreams which meant you would have to uproot yourself from Brooklyn 
right? Relocate to LA, not knowing what was going to happen. That's big, but it inspired all of us to be like, you can do that. Why? Because like your dad said, God was going to be with you. And he has been with you. He was with you in LA. He's with you here in New York, with you in Atlanta. He has continued to be with you. So on that note, I'm going to share what I, what I said there. Um, and, and what my part was, me as a star, don't you dare forget. Smile so bright, you can see what's next. From Harvard to Hampton, always steps correct. Hair stay fly, used to play with them next. Pack light, friend. Pack no regrets. Me, uh, wait, 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 wait. Come on. Um, oh, wait, I think I lost it. Me as a star, don't you dare forget. Smile so bright, you can see what's next. From Harvard to Hampton, always steps correct. Hair stay fly, used to play with them next. Pack light, friend. Take no regrets. C3, she named us. Craig, don't flex me, Amos. She about to be famous. What? Millie, yo, what you, you know, know about growing out podcast? Millie Mill what? at the bars, though. Come on, son. Oh, I remember it all, but at I think the bars, it. though. That's 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 we didn't even talk about how much of a poet she is. Oh. A poet, and, and y'all ain't even know it. I, I only found Y'all better look for her on the credits, my things. brother. Look for her on the credits, so we about to Man. Ooh, I'm telling Man, I'm blessed. Thank you I'm so blessed. much. I'm blessed. Thank you, Mia. Thanks. I could Thank you. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. More animals. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know, right? Go, 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 Love fest. We go ahead. Love fest. Yo, shout out to Darryl, this to, uh, Thank you for that was. I do remember that send off, man. And that was like, I was like, yo, I felt like that was from the heart. Oh, so, MD was like, so we got to do MD, I love that. <laughs> I love that man. I really don't have nothing to say after that day. Y'all done left the girl speechless, and all I expect to do is talk. Um, shoot, I felt like I was gonna say what's up, but now I'm just like, ah. Uh, but um, but yeah, no, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful can't follow that. the rap. She done yeah. drop bars. I know she done drop bars. She done drop bars. You know what I'm saying? Bed style, do a dodge. Came yeah, in the yeah, building yeah, like what? Yeah. What it is though? And I, and I and I can drop bars on you. What up? What's happening? I ain't got no bars. <laughs> Listen, I just but, got out of book now. Nah. <laughs> oh, 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 I see what you did there. I see, I see. But um, but yeah, thank you all for tuning in, man. We like I what I said. What we means. can't just, even, you know, say anymore. But we really appreciate y'all. So if you were inspired, make sure that you share this with a friend. If you are uh listening on um Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave us a review and make sure you follow us on Facebook. Follow me at Mia underscore hall 19. You want to give them your social media? Sure. Amelia? Um on IG, it's Amelia Elizabeth dot me. Where your videos are gonna be on. Amelia Elizabeth dot okay. me on Instagram. So follow <clears throat> her on Instagram. And I'm I'm gorgeous Gordy Nine, and I'm keep the shape you in. Spell it all out the same way. All so of that. Keep the shape you in. Yes. Is it Y O U? Is Y O U I N? Or is it U I N? E Travel. Jesus. All right. We love y'all, and we'll see you next time on Parables from the Projects. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>